Let me try to ask a question that's often brought up about autonomous vehicles. And uh, it might be fun to see if you have any, anything interesting to say, which is about the trolley problem. So uh, the trolley problem is a interesting philosophical construct of uh, that highlights, and many, there's many others like it, of the difficult ethical decisions that uh, we humans have before us in this complicated world. Uh, so the, specifically is the choice between if you are forced to choose uh, to kill a group X of people versus a group Y of people, like one person, if you didn't, if you did nothing, you would kill one person, but if you, you would kill five people, and if you decide to swerve out of the way, you would only kill one person. Do you do nothing or you choose to do something? And you can construct all kinds of sort of ethical experiments of this kind that uh, I, I think at least on a positive note, inspire you to think about like introspect what are the the physics of our morality. And there's usually not good answers there. Uh, I think it, people love it because it's just an exciting thing to think about. I think people who build autonomous vehicles usually roll their eyes because uh, this is not, this one as constructed, this like literally never comes up in reality. You never have to choose between killing <laughs> one or like one of two groups of people. But I wonder if you can speak to, is there some something interesting to you as an engineer of autonomous vehicles that's within the trolley problem? Or maybe more generally, are there difficult ethical decisions that you find that an uh, algorithm must make? On the specific version of the trolley problem, which one would you do? If you're driving. The question itself is a profound question because we humans ourselves yeah. cannot answer it. And that's yeah. the very point. Uh, I, guess, I would uh, kill both. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, humans, uh, I think you're exactly right in that, you know, humans are not particularly good. I think they kind of phrased as a, like, what would a computer do? But you know, humans you know, are not very good. And actually oftentimes I think that you know, freezing and kind of not doing anything because like you've taken a few extra milliseconds to just process and then you end up like doing the worst of the possible worst, outcomes, yeah. right? So um, I, I do think that uh, as you've pointed out, it can be a bit of a distraction and it can be a bit of a kind of a red herring. I think it's an interesting you know, discussion in the realm of uh, philosophy, um, right? But in terms of what, you know, how that affects the actual engineering uh, and deployment of self-driving vehicles, I um, it, it's not how you go about building a system, right? We've you know, talked about how you engineer a system, how you, you know, go about evaluating the different components and the, you know, the safety of the entire thing. How do you kind of inject the, uh, you know, various model-based, safety-based arguments. And you know, like, yes, you reason at parts of the system, you know, you reason about the probability of a collision, the severity of that collision, right? Uh, and that is incorporated and there's, you know, you have to properly reason about the uncertainty that flows through the system, right? So, you know, th those, uh, um, you know, factors definitely play a role in how the cars then behave, but they tend to be more of like the emergent behavior. And what you, you see, like you're absolutely right, that these, you know, clear uh, theoretical problems that they, you know, you, you don't encounter that uh, in system. And really kind of, you know, back to our previous discussion of like, what, what, you know, what, what, you know, which one do you choose? Well, you know, oftentimes like, you made a mistake earlier. Like you shouldn't be in that situation uh, in the first place, right? And in reality, the system comes up. If you build a very good, safe and capable driver, you have enough, uh, you know, clues uh, in the environment that you drive defensively so you don't put yourself in that situation, right? And again, you know, it has, you know, this, if you go back to that analogy of, you know, precision and recall, like, okay, you can make a, tr you know, very hard trade-off of, you know, but like neither answer is really good. But what you know, instead you focus on is kind of moving the whole curve up, and then you focus on building the right capability and the right defensive driving so that, you know, you don't put yourself in a situation like this.